All right, folks, sorry I had to drop out for a few minutes. I had to replace batteries. Right. I'm just talking to my audience. So we're glad that you're here. And I'm back up and live again. I got a fresh battery in there, and I'm good for another three hours. So stick with us. Military justice, Article 10 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice guarantees the right to a speedy trial. And yet, two and a half years later, he hasn't even gone for his actual court martial. Article 13 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice guarantees that you cannot be mistreated in pretrial confinement. It guarantees that the treatment you receive awaiting trial can be no more rigorous, unquote, than what's required for you to show up at the hearing, at the court martial. And yet he was tortured for 10, 11 months on the orders of a Pentagon level general. Every member, every member of chain of command from that general to the two separate commanders at Fort at, uh, at Quantico Marine uh, Brig followed illegal orders in uh, punishing Bradley Manning unlawfully. President Barack Obama, while we're here partially, declared Bradley Manning guilty man at the Pentagon, General Dempsey, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, verbatim said the exact same thing a few months later. He's guilty. And then a general in that Pentagon ordered his illegal treatment. Un and that's called unlawful command influence. Another clear violation of military uh, uniform code of military justice. <laughs> so all these things dictate by law Bradley Manning should be released. And we've been fighting an uphill battle, of course, because we're talking about military judge and military jury eventually. However, now that we know and can prove that there was a conspiracy at every level of chain of command, there is a hope that Bradley Manning will be free. Now, that means the odds of victory at this next hearing in October went from 200 to 1 to about 10 to 1. So we went from like lottery type of odds to uh, a decent poker hand type of odds. Um, but that's something. And that's something that without our efforts, we wouldn't even be in the same, uh, we wouldn't be in the same ball game as what's going on. Bradley Manning has a chance for a life because of what we're doing. We're going to keep fighting until that happens. And if Bradley Manning was free tomorrow by the military, unfortunately, then here's a sort of a downer, is that, uh, the Justice Department could recharge him for the same crimes. Eric Holder uh, could recharge him and take him before a, in, in the federal court. So even if we win tomorrow, which is unlikely, we're going to count on all of you to uh, do a petition campaign immediately for Eric Holder not to recharge uh, Bradley Manning. Wouldn't that be double jeopardy? You would think that would be double jeopardy. <laughs> But it is not. According to the Supreme Court decision, the military law, military courts do not uh, constitute a double jeopardy compared to civilian courts, even though we're talking about the same action, the same crime. Uh, that is unfair. Um, and if I was president, I would change that. Thanks for your support. Uh, pretty proudly, man. Uh, for those of you who are watching, we're down here at 1724 Broadway in downtown Oakland, the backside of Obama campaign headquarters. We're waiting on the arrest of Scott Olson and his six other compatriots who are inside right now, refusing to cooperate with police. We don't know if they've been arrested or not. Uh, but we got a feeling that they are going to be arrested. And uh, so we're down here to show some support for Bradley, Ma Bradley Manning and Scott Olson and the rest of the American heroes 
who have represented this country uh, with the United States military proudly and uh, in great service to the country. So uh, evidently somebody just stepped inside here. We don't know whether anybody's been arrested or not. There's some movement here at the door. We're not real sure about what's going on. We don't see any police vans or police cars pulling up just yet, so we don't really know what's going on inside. Right. Oh, the door's open on the other side? Yeah, with the door's open in here, yeah. Yeah, we're wondering if they're going to start hauling people out or what. Anyway, we're dedicated. We're going to stay here until the last person is taken away, until the police leave. That's a function of our live stream. We're not only here to provide you with coverage of recent events, but we're also here to safeguard the people that are also protesting from any police brutality. And we're here to document everything. And uh, in case we have to be called to a court of law, which we'll gladly do. So if you're at a demonstration and you get arrested where Freeman Sullivan is at, and you need somebody to come and testify on your behalf, you can always be sure that I'll be able to do that for you. You can count on it, 100%. Not 99, but 100%. And uh, it's one of my functions here. So they have a little action at the door, but we don't know, really know what's going on. We'll see here in a minute. If you'd like to talk to me, uh, please log on to the social stream or the chat room. And you can chat with me, and I'll uh, answer any questions you have. If you'd like more information, please go to bradleymanning.org, and that'll be the bulk of the information about the Bradley Manning case. So, thanks for watching. And do come back next month. You're going to be in for a treat because I'm going to the East Coast. I'll be flying to New York and Washington, D.C. to cover Occupy Wall Street protests and several other protests on the East Coast. So that ought to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm also going to be bringing you... Uh, uh, live streams from the Yippee Cafe, which is in uh, Lower East Side. Uh, there should be some stuff going on there. All in all, it should be an exciting trip, and I look forward to bringing you the best in live streams. And uh, I'm happy to do it. I do this uh, free of charge as a service to you, the community, and a service also to the people who are protesting to protect them against police brutality. And thank you for watching. Let your friends know that I'm here. And uh, the more people we have watching, uh, the more that we can affect change in society and make the world a better place to live, hopefully. So basically, you know, and for you that are watching, this doesn't play out like a video or, or television. Uh, there's lots of moments where nothing's going on and which I don't edit anything and it's all completely unedited and unobstructed and I try to get you as close to the action as possible. Thank you. <laughs> so there's still a crowd of about 15, 20 people out here. What? And we're waiting uh, to uh, see if anybody's getting arrested. And, uh, Uh, this is uh, U-S-T-R-E dot A-M slash N capital H-U-D. Can you like email it or tweet it? Yeah, I've been tweeting it. I tweet it constantly. Every five minutes I tweet out and Facebook. You're doing like hashtag best Here, let me show you. So that's where I want to go to tweet. I'm just using free Bradley Manning as the hashtag. Okay. So there's actually this action. Okay, what is, is that? Hashtag bets for the number four. Okay, Brad. Bets for Brad? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, for all those of you who are following tweets out there, that's bets number four for, for Brad. Bets for Brad. I just used free Bradley Banning because it was easy. It seemed to cover it at the time. But we'll add that hashtag on the next tweet. So we can come in. We happen to be in downtown Oakland, uh, around the 19th Street uh, BART station. 
uh, come on down and join us. We're out here at 1721 Broadway at the back entrance of Obama headquarters, uh, awaiting the arrest or the removal of Scott Olson and six other compatriots from the building. And that's what we're here and recording. And we'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, you can uh, follow me. Uh, I'm at Freeman Sullivan on Twitter. Facebook, I'm Clark Sullivan. And if you'd like to email me uh, regarding any future coverage, you have an event that you'd like for me to show up at, uh, you can email me at freemansullivan at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to come out if you're, if you're, what you like me to do is political in nature and uh, has some kind of anti-authoritarian ideal that you would like for me to record or report on. I'd be more than happy to do it free of charge. So uh, and I'm always looking for events that make for good live streaming. And I guess uh, uh, Oakland Police Department negotiators showed up. She's got three stripes, so she's definitely got some. She's got more stripes than anybody else here. So most of the confrontational people seem to have left. I'll do what I do. You know, I, I mean, just leave no, it on. I, I just mean to have it when I'm when I'm at home and I can. You're watch watching the live streams. It's like, okay, well, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I try to get a bunch of them up and then I just leave them up. Yeah. And then if something happens, well, then I'll go to that one. Yeah. Right. That's generally the best way I found to do it. You got to have a good, pretty good internet connection to do that, though. But. Well, yeah, I'm I'm in Mexico part of the time, so sometimes the connection isn't so good, but. Well, you know, it's a connection. Best you could do, yeah. Um, yeah, I pay extra for high speed where I live. They're still in there. The veterans you know. are still in there, people. Woo! So evidently people are still inside. No. But I live in downtown San Francisco, so it's a lot easier to do. Say it again. I said I live in downtown San Francisco. So I, high speed internet is a lot oh, easier. Yeah. To come by. I have that here, but... Sometimes where I'm in Mexico, not quite so high speed, but still it's connection. And then we're lucky. We're lucky that we're in downtown because my phone is on a 4G network, so I get excellent reception in downtown Oakland. And in anywhere where there's lots of buildings and stuff, I always get a really good connection. But you know, like up in Marin, you don't get one at all. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. The moment you go west of San Rafael, yeah, this is it. But there's not very many protests out there, so there is some in Fairfax. Like on the yeah, weekends, they have people. But living in downtown makes it easier for me to get around. A lot easier, you know. Yeah. Especially when you're in one of these. And I'm probably at the point now where I'm about ready to chuck the wheelchair. Right, I don't think they said but I've been that. stuck in this thing for almost two years, you know. Yeah. But I'm doing a lot better now. I'm walking around and oh. and uh, I don't fear going out into the world as much as I used to. <laughs> right, I planned a trip going to New York and D.C. and and uh, you know, so I'm not not we're not as worried about getting around as I used to be. So. Well, that's good. It's a big plus. Okay. And I've been an activist for 41 years now, so mm -hmm. I've been doing this kind of stuff. When were you, know, you born? I was born in 1960. 1960? Since I was 11. And uh, <laughs> during Kent State, when they killed all the students at Kent State, well, I mean, the next day I got up and I had to uh, yeah. shut off the intercom in the whole school building during the Pledge of Allegiance. And I was oh. a marked man Where was that? forever after. This was in Baltimore County, Maryland. Oh. Oh. And I was a marked man all the way up until I was in college. Like I dropped out of high school in my sophomore year and I was going to college basically at that time. And then I had a vice principal came to my house and says, told me, he says, if you want to go to Johns Hopkins, we can make it possible for you. 
so I went to Johns Hopkins and studied pharmacology <laughs> and you know really so I'm pretty much a self-made man though uh, well come on now pretty much can't do pretty it without much. your people you're standing on well you know I pretty much have done it alone on most of it most of the stuff there's groups that I work with like I work with Occupy San Francisco mm -hmm. well not so much with them anymore but more with Occupy Bay Area United and uh, the other uh, Act council we have set up there to deal with all the the umbrella groups, you know. Yeah, my good friend Keith has started the the occupation at the B of A in Bernal. Yeah, that was December. a good thing. It's we, it's she's keeping. I'm not there every Thursday, but she's there. I've she covered uh, some of their events, like uh, yeah. I was at the one where they went to PNC Bank. Yeah. It was for the uh, what was it, Miss Choi, I believe her name was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure who was. Who. Yeah, but we that was a very successful action. <laughs> And I bet you better the believe people are very PNC stood up yeah. mm -hmm. and they did notice what was going on and, and they decided they were going to renegotiate the lady's uh, mortgage for her. Yeah. Right. They couldn't do it right then on the spot because somebody wasn't uh, delegated with the authority to. Right but uh, uh, later on I found out that uh, they came back and they were they were going to renegotiate her, her foreclosure on her, mm -hmm. on her thing. So that was one good thing. And uh, I'm excited to be going to the East to get out of to get out of the Bay Area for a while, I've been stuck. I was here on a visit to buy some pot because you can't get any good pot back on the East Coast. It's all like Mexican crap. And uh, so I, was, I, I flew back here to buy some pot. And while I was here, while I was in San Francisco visiting, I was stepping, uh, I was walking across the street, I went to step up on a curb and my, my fibula just went snap. And then my tibia did too, naturally. And I had to get a, a titanium rod put in my leg. Well, yeah, I lived here for 30 years and I moved to the East Coast to buy a house. Your, your disability. Yeah, it's just a couple of years. And uh, I've been stuck stuck in San Francisco. Not that it's such a bad place to be stuck, but uh, I really haven't been able, physically able to leave. And now I'm able, I got a house in D.C. and I got a family on the East Coast. And uh, I'm kind of missing my family. And, you know, I mean, I lived in San Francisco for many years, but once you make those connections again, and now I get along with my parents a lot better than I used to, than I ever did. Oh, of course, good. they're in their 70s, you know. And Just like me. So, yeah, we get along, you know. And, and my dad supports my live streaming, and, and he's probably watching right now. If you're out there watching Dad, hi. And uh, That's good. so it's a good thing. You know, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with my parents for a while when I go back east. You know, one of, my, one of the things I like to do, I like to get my dad and get him to do something that he has never done before. Right? Like. You know, whatever it is. But... Whatever it is, I always think of something. Yeah. Right, last time, I woke him up at three o'clock in the morning to go out and help me get a, get a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> right, which he did. Right, got him up. Was, hey, Dad, you know, you know, because he doesn't want me driving any of his cars. <laughs> yeah. Because he keeps them all in mint condition, right? And he's really anal about his cars. But if you want to ride somewhere, he's more than happy to take you. Well, that's great. You know? that's all you need. And he's been retired. He was a he was in a colonel in the army, United States Army. <laughs> So he's pretty much come around 180 degrees about his views mm -hmm. of what he used to believe then, because he was real gung ho military back in those days. But after serving 33 years in the military, he actually got to see what a bullshit fucking you know what he was doing and everything because he was um, in charge of uh, uh, shipping uh, the Allied or the uh, Pershing missiles and the uh, and what was the other ones? The uh, I can't remember what the other one. You know the real small ones missiles. Right, all over Europe because they were playing a nuclear shell game in Russia at the time. No, they have a they had a mis uh, special missiles. They were cruise missiles. Cruise missiles. Oh. And he did that, and then he retired shortly after that. And uh, he totally his personality and everything totally changed the moment he got out of the military. You know. And when was that? Uh, back in the 80s. So when did he join? Uh, he joined back in '55. Oh, okay. So he was mostly injured. He was in uh, Germany for, he did uh -huh. four tours in Germany and two tours in Vietnam. And then the rest of the time he was stationed at Fort Meade where Bradley Manning is going to be on trial. That's the first right. army. Uh, so a little crowd of people around the door. Uh, Sergeant somebody, I don't know her name. I didn't catch it. She was over here. Yeah, yeah she was she's talking to them, trying to talk to them. They're not talking. They're holding their little piece of paper. I don't know what the piece of paper says. It's the letter that they're asking it's them the to fax. It's the letter. Yeah, they won't Thank fax you. it. And but so what do you think is going to happen? Um, I'm not sure right now. Okay. Yeah, we're just waiting it out. I just want to tell you that's what the, what's happening right now. All right, thanks. Uh -huh. Thanks for the update. So you got it here. What's going on? They want it faxed. Yeah, they're just asking the Obama campaign people to fax a 
a statement to the Obama campaign headquarters in Washington, D.C., and uh, that seems like a pretty reasonable uh, demand. Uh, you know, I can't see anything why it would be so hard to fax the document. But you know how these people are once they get an idea in their mind and become stubborn, they become even more stubborn and don't want to even cooperate in any way. And if that's the way Obama campaign headquarters is going to act, I would ask you to consider your vote that you're going to maybe casting or thinking about casting for Obama, that if he won't even cooperate, if their campaign won't even cooperate by sending a fax, what makes you think he's going to do anything on your behalf if you vote for him for president? And personally, I'm very disillusioned with the Obama campaign. I voted for him the first time. I even donated money to his campaign because I was sick of eight years of George W. Bush. And uh, I thought maybe Obama would be a better president. And, uh, well, I was fooled. And he hasn't been a better president. And in a lot of ways, he's been worse. Uh, so uh, Obama won't be getting my vote this time around. That's for damn sure. Uh, if you're going to vote for president at all, I recommend you vote for uh, Jill Stein, who's running on the Green Party ticket, or vote for Roseanne, who's also running for president, and she's going to be on a number of ballots around the country. And uh, you know, at least with Roseanne, that she's going to say her piece, and you know what you're getting. And she's also very much in support of Bradley Manning, yeah. from what I understand, and also for a lot of the other causes that are out here. And uh, she's one of my friends that I can count on. I met her in uh, in, in uh, New York City when I was there, yeah. and she's big pothead, so. <laughs> We have a lot in common. It's important stuff. Uh, yes, it is. Well, yeah. The last time I was in Oakland, I was here for the the pot rally that they had when Obama was in town. Oh. And that was a that was the largest pot protest. Oh my goodness. That we've had in California uh -huh. since Prop 215 in San Francisco. That was like the largest one I'd been to. I'd organized several like festivals that had more attendance, but those weren't actually a political protest per se. That was a political protest, per se. That was 2,500 people marching through the streets of Oakland. And uh, it was a good, good statement. Of course, you couldn't get anywhere near Fox Theater over here, right? Yeah, I, I wasn't here. When that, that was kind of a disappointment. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. I didn't expect to get too close. Our Right. <laughs> They're just such idiots. Just like, if they weren't so stupid, they might be threatening. I mean, well, they are because they have guns. These guys have to work really hard to keep their faces going. Yeah, well, they're yeah. pretty mellow, all things yeah. considered. They hate me, too, because they look at me and Yeah, well, let them talk. You know that, huh? You saw, huh? As long as you don't have a warrant and you don't have charges pending, there's not a whole hell of a lot they can do to you. <laughs> it's been my experience with the police department. Well, I got a lot of experience dealing with that set PD. have those things <laughs> Yeah, well, I would, too. You know, they weren't carrying yeah, guns. a uh, film... Uh, yeah. uh, it's not done yet, actually. I'd beat their ass if they weren't, you know, just... <laughs> yeah, I'll take a slice. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Right. I'll pass. Uh, this, this film is about the Harvard women that in, the, in 1970 that wanted to have a, a women's, um, women's building, women's space. And the Harvard people said, eh, well, forget that. Later. And um, so they got together and they occupied an abandoned building mm -hmm. on the Harvard grounds. And um, they, I'm not sure exactly how, whether it was a few days or a week or something. Anyway, what was so amazing was to see what happened. The president of Harvard came over and talked to them. There were a couple of policemen there with no billy clubs, no tasers, no guns, smiles on their faces. It was an amazing, the, the footage that there, there is, it's just so, so familiar. And yet, it's a, in the Dear National Office, some angry protesters came and they wanted us to send you this fax. They said they would leave as soon as we did. <laughs> so we're sending the fax. <laughs> oh, finally, huh? How hard would that be? Burn it if you want, but it's coming through. I'm thinking they don't have the authorization to arrest him. I'm thinking the Obama headquarters is not letting them arrest him. Oh, yeah. So they're just staging, just like last time they did a hunger strike. Yeah, it was also a nationwide exact same thing. People taking Obama headquarters wherever they were. 
was that on this issue? Um, it was over our integration. And this is, he capitulated on the issue and issued the executive order. And there was uh, a little bit of wording acknowledging the protest of his hand. That's great. But not much. It's kind of like a, you know, Biden talking about gay stuff and then he's got to. And then, oh, there you go. Uh, it's, it's, they handle it the same way. It's like, oh, I'm on front street. Yeah, I'm thinking not. But, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, they could just beat those guys up and drag them out. <laughs> <laughs> if they had the authorization to do it. <laughs> right. Maybe <laughs> they guys are like, yeah, our yeah, totally done that. That's, 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 that's what we'd like to do. <laughs> you know. Instead, they're going to stand around until the Obama headquarters people tell them to do something bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, you know... So they don't want to press charges? They don't want to make headlines. Bad ones. Although they did they did arrest people in Portland. Oh, they did? Yeah. Well, it was today, I think. Oh, right? Yeah. So they were locked in in Portland when, before the police got here. Oh, some MS-7s finally showed up. I heard there were arrests. I don't know for sure, but I heard there were, like, five or six arrests. In Portland. It's like, that's... If you're running a... A little bit of mainstream media coverage. It's always good. Yeah. They always have the twenty thousand dollar cameras. Right, Republicans don't like protesters, so you know they just be like, oh yeah. Don't like protesters. Yeah. Oh of course, of course. Of course. Yeah. 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 But it seems like the Democrats don't even care anymore. Like they don't even pretend to be like on the people's side at all. You know? We're corporate assholes. They pretend to be. There's no good yeah. cop, bad cop anymore. It's just bad cop. Bad cop, worse cop. Bad cop, quiet cop. Bad cop, quiet cop. Eat a lot of pizza demonstrations. I kind of plan on it nowadays, right? Well, it's, it's funny because you know, I, just the other day they're talking about how high the price of pizza is going to be because of the door and all this. Oh, there's no cheese and blah blah blah. Right, and this drought. And the drought, and yeah, all that stuff. And uh, hey, it's at these demonstrations. I mean, what's the story about that? You know, it's the people's food. I guess. Cheap and hot, fairly nutritious. You guys must be hungry. I know I've I was. got some really crappy yeah, beans I can have. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong to them, man. I mean, all my beans have been it's good. Hard to yeah, I changed careers yeah, doing the live streaming. I'm a web developer and computer programmer by trade. I I, I and then I, uh, after I broke my leg, I, I qualified for Social Security and Disability Insurance. And I don't have to work at a regular that job anymore. Okay, and I have plenty of money. And, and <laughs> actually, <laughs> work I'm not organized in my building where I live in. I get, I get paid in San Francisco. And I get paid to live in, uh, live in my building. So uh, we do a lot of work with people that are uh, recently uh, almost and stuff like that. Yeah. I just yeah, it gets so crazy. I'm gonna be glad to take a month <laughs> off. Yeah. I've never fought them. You know, get away from everything. Too bad you have to fly to get there. <laughs> well, I just. I can trot them out if people was, are hungry. I flew from green here to Boston and back in nice a couple of days. It's better driving. I love you, Wendy. I guess. It's cheaper. I'd rather go like. I'm not sure how. And it's cheaper. I just feel yeah. bad about That's, it. Well, it's only, um, I was only paid, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a flying. Uh, I paid 139 and we're on, uh, each way around. We need so. help more people. On Virgin. Oh, that's what, I got the 11 o'clock flight out of San Francisco. Yeah, we were Virgin, too. He's at the stairway, I guess. Um, he was, hasn't been really involved in food access. I saw him at the, the uh, OP Park thing on uh, Monday. Uh, and he was at the uh, library um, Tuesday. I, mean, I sleep on the plane. That's why I like to go there. I like to do the, the uh, overnight flight. Because then I can just sleep on the plane. And then when I wake up, I'm uh, where I'm supposed to be. And I got well, the one year was like, anniversary like when they this, shut so down. There wasn't uh, too much uh, problem with it. That's what Valium was. Valium's or, was or, or <laughs> you know, take a nice plans, medicated brownie so before you, yeah, before you get on the plane. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't drink anymore, so. I said I quit drinking, so. That was a big plus. Big step forward. I agree. I'm going to wake up with hangovers anymore. Yeah. Okay, well, it's nice Good talking to you. Hey, it's really nice talking to you. Take care of yourself. Uh, we'll do. We'll be. Break any more phones. No, I'll be. I'm gonna be here until, until the bar stops running. Okay. So. Thanks. All right. See you later. Bye. <laughs>
Yes, well, not gonna, much going on. Stop them. We weren't going to um, stop them. I mean, they according to, uh, to the latest yeah. reports, uh, the Obama campaign uh, people the are refusing to have people arrested, um, but they're not meeting the demands of Scott Olson. So if anything happens, I do have a a Klieg light that goes with the camera and so you'll be able to see but as long as nothing's going to be happening I'm not going to switch on the light so, but we will we'll make sure you'll be able to see everything if and when it happens and we're not real sure uh, whether Scott and his compadres are going to be arrested uh, right now he's in there negotiating with the sergeant from the Oakland Police Department so that remains to be seen and we'll keep you updated with everything you can stick with us if you want more information, go to bradleymanning.org. Uh, the hashtag for this is hashtag bets, the number four, for and Manning. It's vets for Manning. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. It's better. I've lived in retrofitted buildings, but I still, you know, I don't know about it. I'm not in work every day in San Francisco. I'd probably follow my head in an earthquake, but I get to go there and work. Yeah, you know, it survived the 1980 high earthquake. I'm not saying it's you know, it's an old, it's an old brick building, but you know, it's amazing how much you know this stuff survived. Great. It was all the way affected. Kind of dark out here, but anyway, we'll throw on the light when. The situation demands it. Okay, how about instead of sending 50 cops, you send a lackey from the city attorney's office to have everyone sign a waiver that says, I acknowledge there's an earthquake risk in the library and I'm waiving earthquake. my right to sue the city over dying in the library. So no. Get the fuck out of my way. That would cost me to enter. It's private property, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's always about private property. You can't do on that in you know. No amount of Street lights haven't come on yet. If <coughs> you have any questions or anything, uh, just log on to the social stream to the right of the video and log on with Twitter, Facebook, or Ustream, and you can. Well, chat with me here as I'm sitting here. Hey, it's Robert. Hey, hi, Robert. How you doing? Uh -oh, we got the sergeant that's coming out here. So we really don't know what's going on just yet. Sorry for the darkness. All right, we got a got an outcome here. Looks like. So it looks like looks like the Obama campaign has acceded to the demands of the protesters. So it doesn't look like anybody's going to be arrested, but we will be sticking around for the next few minutes just to see what happens. Thanks for watching. What's your friends know about the stream? So we had some good news. Uh, looks like they're going to be uh, released out of, and they're not going to be arrested uh, because the Obama campaign uh, decided that they were going to send the facts that the uh, Iraq veterans against the war had demanded that uh, the Obama campaign workers did. So that looks like good news. And I'm going to stick around until I see the protesters leave and then I'll end the stream. So that's where the uh, current situation is at right now at the moment. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. And uh,
So we got some street lights coming on. So I might not have to use my cling light, which will be good. Still a little dark out. I guess it's around 8.30 p.m. I can't really tell. But. So looks like the situation's been diffused. Uh, you know, from what I can see, uh, having uh, the Obama campaign send the facts was a, was a perfectly reasonable request that was, should have been made. Uh, we shouldn't have had to gone through all this long, drawn-out negotiation. They should have just done it without asking too many questions. I mean, uh, it's not you know, it's not like it's going to cost them any money or anything, or even get the campaign, uh, Obama campaign, to make any emissions or anything like that. So, let's see what happens. I've been down here for a few of the events with Occupy over here in Oakland, and the police today have generally been better behaved and less confrontational, which goes a long way into establishing some kind of relationship with the community rather than one of confrontation and violence. Uh, because I'll let you know, as a live streamer, I'm not here to confront the police or to cause violence. Uh, I'm here to act in a completely nonviolent manner because I feel like I can make my point as a citizen better that way and I don't have to use violence or smash windows or any of that nonsense even though uh, personally I separate violence into physical violence which is actually harming people physically uh, personally I don't believe that smashing uh, glass is going to accomplish anything but I don't also believe that it's violent either so there's my feelings on the subject uh, for what it's worth So everything's quiet right now. We just found out from the sergeant that the Obama campaign did fax the documents that the Iraqi veterans against the war wanted faxed. So that was really good news. A little chilly out here. It's California. You might think it's nice and warm out here in California, but uh, it isn't. <laughs> when you're close to the coast like Oakland or San Francisco it gets mighty chilly at night <laughs> so for all you viewers that are from out of town uh, a little word to the warning uh, word to the wise that when you come to San Francisco or Oakland make sure you bring a sweater because it, it do get cold well you got plenty of padding there <laughs> So we're out here in expectation. Hopefully Scott Olson and his his uh, comrades will be released here in sure sure bit. <laughs> Not a whole lot going on. Lots of waiting. got any questions you'd like to ask if you would like to find out more about Bradley Manning go to BradleyManning.org and you'll find the latest uh, information about demonstrations protest actions and about his upcoming court trial in a kangaroo military court uh, because basically he's being denied all his rights and uh, especially the right to a speedy trial uh, it's been over two years and he still hasn't really hasn't gone to trial there really there's been a few motions but that's been about it
I guess it looks like people are leaving. Looking like they're going to leave. Yeah, I think they're going to kind of come out the other side. What do you think? I have no idea what's going on anymore. I don't know what to do. I'm getting kind of tired of sitting here on this side, so I think I'm going to roll around to the other side as soon as I, in a minute. I'd like to thank you all for your patience and watching. I'll give you one last look here at the back entrance. I'm going to go around to the other side here. myself back up into shape again. Uh, a little warmer on this side of the building. And we're out here waiting for Scott Olson to be released and his six comrades. I'm going to get up here in a second and I'll see if I can give you a picture through the glass here uh, so you can see what's going on. Give me a second. As you can see here, uh, this is we're at the uh, front of Obama campaign headquarters and you can see that one of the windows was smashed last week by unknown assailants uh, who was actually upset with Obama and Obama campaign and uh, decided to inflict a little property damage uh, although I really don't see what good it does uh, the Obama campaign won't have to pay for it so. Uh, it looks like I'm the last live streamer here, too. So, we're getting the latest coverage here, uh, the most, most comprehensive. I've been here all day today. And I'll be here uh, 
until either it's got Olsen Lee's or my batteries run out. So thanks for watching. I'm going to roll down here and check out what's going on. Okay. So they have uh, 15 more minutes left before they get arrested. Let's see if I can give you a little peek inside the window here. Maybe you can see. That, uh, if you raise it up, you can see it right here. Second. No, I got it. Right here. There's no like, dark area. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're lucky you brought me. Oh, hell no. Do they really have an LGBT? Well, not really. It's been biting hard. I think I was better in my old spot. <laughs> but uh, definitely, there's people inside that are protesting. And they're not leaving until. I think they're here to get arrested, but you can see that they're here. At Obama headquarters. So evidently something's going to happen in the next 15 minutes, <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> I don't know whether you can see it or not, but there's some uh, desert camouflage pants underneath the eye in Obama. That's Scott Olson, in case you're wondering. We're here at Obama headquarters in downtown Oakland at 1714 Telegraph or 1721 Broadway, which is on the other side. Uh, Protesters were inside demanding that uh, you see that little statement that's under the letter A. Uh, that was a statement that Scott Olson and his comrades asked to be faxed to Obama campaign headquarters. And if I can get my hands on a copy of it, uh, I'll be happy to read it to you. And a, and a short. How's it going? Oh, that's right. And we still got a pretty fair, pretty good crowd out here. Everybody's out here in support of uh, Bradley Manning. And we're sitting out here. All right. See what's up with the. If anybody's going to be arrested or taken away. Hey, I got a text at 8.16, which is about 20 minutes ago now, that the police were giving them their 30-minute warning. So that means there's only about 
got 10 more minutes before the police are planning on moving it. Yeah, we know. There's only like eight people on the other side. So if there are people that are interested in providing support in some form, it's probably good to have more people move to the other side. Just wanted to let people know what's going on. Also, it would help if you could simply take pictures or video of what's going on. And then email it to press at bradleymanning.org or tweet it to save Bradley. Thank you all for sticking it out with us. Is there any word on that? Do they, they send a fax or not? I've never tweeted. What? Cop on? Oh, yeah. 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 And we're out here at uh, Obama Campaign Headquarters here in downtown Oakland. If you're in the area, come stop by and say hi. Uh, show some support for uh, Bradley Manning and Scott Olson and the five, uh, six demonstrators. Or eight demonstrators now, I believe, as our earliest count. So thanks for watching. Oh, uh, uh, If you have any questions or if you want to know anything, uh, log on to the social stream to the right of the video and either be logged on with Twitter or Facebook or you can log on with Ustream. To leave a message or ask me a question, I'll be happy to respond. Uh, we're getting a lot of supports for uh, people that are supporting Scott Olson. Thank you. Uh, he'll appreciate it. We'll pass on the word to let you know, that, to let him know personally that you supported him in his actions. Uh, yeah, I believe he's very brave for doing what he's doing. So we'll definitely make sure. Uh, it's hard to see what's going on, but evidently somebody got up. Oh, thank goodness. Somebody lose a set of keys. Thank you to the number one on the wall. You might want to go check around. They're making after. So the police are inside. Here, you can't really see. So Scott definitely is making a, a statement about freeing Bradley Manning. Nice little crowd of supporters outside. She blended all and blended in. Anyway, so they're admitting they're holding him hostage. <laughs> There's people right on the other side of the store. They're being held hostage. Right, when I was Bradley Manning. Do you see 
Yeah, I'm going to back off a little bit until something happens. Back down there. <laughs> Oh. We're out here outside of Obama campaign headquarters. Nice crowd of Obamas or uh, of uh, Bradley Manning supporters that are outside and people that are supporting Scott Olson and his compatriots inside. Let me get a little closer to the glass here. Let's see what's going on. And we're about as close as you're ever going to get here. I don't like it when my drama could have been better. Like, Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Watch it without the sound. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to you. Got a big crowd here at the door. Everybody's trying to crowd in. Oh, they're making arrests one by one. And thanks for watching. Uh, I'd like to thank all my viewers for watching. Of course, that story you know. Oh, but it changes. You can make it up here on that. Yeah. 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 And I don't know, it's just not worth it. I'm actually setting up my own server. Pardon? No. No, I'm running Android on the phone here. No, General No, you stream is Android. They run Android or Mac. That might have been one shot in the I'm picking up a lot more viewers pretty quickly here. Thank you all for joining us here. This is Freeman Sullivan in uh, 1714 Broadway here in down or Telegraph, excuse me, in downtown Oakland, covering the Bradley Manning protest. And as y'all know, Bradley Manning is facing 150 years in, in military prison for being with the WikiLeaks uh, whistleblower and releasing all the State Department documents, um, which led to the Arab Spring and might have prevented a war from being, from happening. So he's a true American hero, in my opinion. And uh, if you want to find out more about what's going on with Bradley Manning, go to BradleyManning.org and where you'll receive the latest information about what's happening with this campaign. Uh, one by one, the demonstrators are being taken or arrested and taken into custody. So, and my pictures here aren't going to be any good either. 
Uh, I might get close up to the glass, but you're still not going to see able to see too much. Uh, Oakland PD, for the most part, has been very restrained. Uh, they maintain a minimal presence throughout the entire demonstration. So we do have to give them props for that. One of the few props that we can give the Oakland Police Department. You listen to friend who we were. We didn't know this. Well, they were talking about it at that time. Yeah, but they didn't know each other that way. Because uh, Lee was a higher level uh, guy. Early in the line. But Lee was a higher level guy already. Right? Lee was a very successful guy all the way through his career. Like well, while you looked at the Fran's career, was more. Uh, <laughs> 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 Andrew was more. People just didn't think much of him. Yeah, I don't know how I was very I don't know what was going on. What do you mean? Because Grant worked his way up during the war. He went from. Yeah, but he was not the best in the United States. He did not become a general. He became a general. So we still have a pretty good crowd out here. Our negotiator is back. Best we can find out here. No, no, we get in the West for the Civil War. He was the head, he was the leader of the Western Army. The exact same day, the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh, he was over in the Western Army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Scott is being led away, that was him. And it was quite a campaign. That was the most impressive campaign. Evidently, he's being led away. Yeah, let's get some people in the back. There's some people on the other side. I'm going to stay on this side for the time being. I just came back from the other side. I'm not trying to be lazy or anything, but I am in a wheelchair, guys. So do keep that in mind. Evidently Scott has uh, gotten up and uh, looks like he's going to be released. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, looks like our situation is going to be successfully dis defused. I'd like to go home. <laughs> I've been out here since four. Well, I'm getting a little tired and a little cold. But I told you I'd stay here until the batteries run out. Evidently, they're going to be leaving from the other side. So. So, we're letting people leave voluntarily? Uh, Scott, I think Scott's the only one that left by his own accord. Okay. So. Good to know. So, I'll stick around since there's still people inside that are one, you know, they're going to probably do civil disobedience, looks like. But Scott Olson did leave, for those of you who are watching. We're down here at 1721 Telegraph, near 17th Street in downtown Oakland, covering the Bradley Manning protests. What's going on? Uh, there's people inside that made some demands of uh, the Obama headquarters uh, to send the packs, and now some people that are going to stay and get, get arrested. Uh, but uh, most of everybody else has left. And that's about as much as I know. Okay. So. 
glad, uh, glad to be of service. Still got a couple more people. I believe there's only two or three people inside that are going to uh, be arrested. Everything is calm and peaceful. Uh, there's no violence or any. Uh, so they, they, they took Scott Olson into the back and they held him in the hallway. And two of them spoke to him for quite a while, like two or three minutes. They handed him a piece of paper and then they came back up here. So we're not exactly sure what it was. Okay. Okay, so he's back up here now. Okay, good. Well, there you go, the latest information. So evidently, uh, a little confusing, but evidently Scott is uh, going to go ahead and uh, be arrested. They, like I said, they took him and they talked to him for a few minutes. So that's the latest information. That was pretty cynical, huh? At least he's going to get three square meals. I don't know, bloody sandwiches. That's not a very square meal, if you ask me. Okay, so Scott Olson isn't visible here with the other veterans. He's also not visible from the back. So people can't see where Scott Olson is. Okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was wrong about them all just being. Evidently, he's got. Is he facing other charges or something? Has he got another court case that he's caught? No, I guess they decided as a group that okay. it would be better for them to have him on the outside as a spokesperson. Yeah. And uh, they all decided they would stay in and be arrested and he would come out and speak. Which is good because right now he's being interviewed. Yeah, he's and, completely uh, surrounded by people. Everyone's Scott, what happened? Uh, Freeman okay, Sullivan so on Ustream. Uh, yeah, I got a microphone and everything. Whole nine yards light. I need light. Yep. So, yeah, I made sure I got the best camera I could get and the best coverage. Uh, it's an LG Esteem from Metro PCS. And it's $71 a month. It costs me for unlimited bandwidth. So I can live stream as much as I want, and it's got a 8 megapixel camera on it, so I can um, get HD. These guys are all on their phones. And, uh, can I, can I fucking I'm actually getting ready. Already? I'm going to drop Ustream uh, because I have my own server, and I'm currently writing some software for the camera, so I can run my own software and everything, and eliminate all the commercials and all the ads that go along with it. Yeah, that's so, what I really like. You know, but I, I use live stream. But it. yeah, but Ustream doesn't charge. Yeah. Whereas live stream charges, I think, forty nine dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, but they, yeah, they give you better. Uh, they'll give you a better picture, but you know, for fifty bucks a month, you know, I'm already paying seventy a month for my just for my the bandwidth on my phone alone. And unless I get some kind of corporate sponsor or some kind of sponsorship, I'm not going to front out any more money than I've already fronted out. Yeah. You know. Have you heard of Click? Yeah, I've heard of them. I have. I had that app. Uh, Justin TV is pretty good too. I don't know if you ever heard of them. And they Justin. Yeah, no, they don't. That's the only thing holding them back, right? You can um, see. Oh, so we're getting people arrested here. I want to try and get up to the window so people can see. Yeah, I'll get in there. I can get up here. 
I'm going to go over here. Hey, watch your bike, Justin. Scott's on the other side. Scott's been released. So there are people that are getting arrested. As you can see, kind of faintly through the... <laughs> so there are being people that are being taken into custody. Maybe I'll wheel around on the other side here in a minute. Yeah, go for it. Yes, Scott's Well, I'm going to go around to the other side here and see if we can get some pictures of people being taken in the, out of the building. They're arresting them right now. They're arresting them right now. Yeah. So let's go over to the other side. Smoke too many damn cigarettes. Out, but he told us that the rest of these guys are going to get arrested. Yeah, well, they were going to get arrested. Yeah, I want to see if they're going to take them out on this side. See so if we can get some pictures of the arrestees. Oops, sorry. No, they're going to come out this way, it looks like. <laughs> We're back on the other side again. And they made a few arrests already. These are pretty quiet. A few people have been arrested already yeah. and uh, taken into custody. We don't know whether, which side they're going to come out, but it looks like it's going to be this side. <laughs> well, you're welcome to take as many of them as home as you want. Yeah, the you're about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to have to choke them down myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's some sirens off in the distance. Yep. I wonder if that's going to be the uh, the paddy wagon that's going to come and take them away. Or I really shouldn't say paddy wagon. That's actually a racist term uh, because back in the 1800s, paddy wagon was some place they took the black Irish away to, that were arrested. So. And the police are actually being uh, somewhat civil. I'm not pushing anybody around, so that's a good sign. I don't see any tear gas canisters or rubber bullets or anything like that. 
Yeah. 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 They take the people that are in custody if they take them outside this entrance, uh, which looks like that's going to be the case. Uh, there's only two entrances, one on the other side and one on this side that we know about. Uh, but maybe, uh, but it seems like, architecturally that seems to be the way. Thanks to everybody who's watching. Thanks for supporting the stream. Uh, tweet it out to your friends. Let them know that I'm here. If you got any questions or anything, I'm log on to the chat. Uh, five people were arrested in Portland today, according to the latest tweets that I got on here. And they were released as soon as they reached the police station. So, five people got arrested in Portland, so thanks for that info. Uh, if you know of any more people that got arrested at any of today's actions, please tweet them in to me and let me know, and I'll let everybody here in the crowd know. And uh, thank you to Vernon Luca, Lucas, Vernon Lucas, 35. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me properly now. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that crowd is kind of loud a little bit, so I'll try and speak up so I'm intelligible. We're serving food out front here, too. So if you're hungry and you're looking for something to do, come down here and hang out. We're here at 1700 block of Broadway, uh, 1700 block of Telegraph near 17th Street in downtown Oakland. We're awaiting the taking away of some of the arrested that were taken into custody uh, to make sure that they don't get beat up on their way to jail. And also to show our solidarity with the people that were arrested. So do stick around. And I'll be here as long as my batteries hold out. i got one battery left. I've got two hours worth of tape, or two hours worth of power. Power, so. Free Bradley Manning! 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 Free Bradley Quiet right here. That's what I get for smoking off around cigarettes. Uh, one police officer just went in.
they steal the signs? Because they're coming out. 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 They're coming out.
Hey, can somebody explain why it became... So there you got it, folks. So that was it. And uh, I guess we're going to wrap it up. The uh, arrestees were taken away. Obama campaign headquarters has been shut down. So there you have it, viewers. Very militant attitude among the demonstrators here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This has been Clark Sullivan, Freeman Sullivan, on Ustream. Uh, stay updated on my uh, my Ustream for upcoming events. And uh, we're going to be signing off here uh, in a minute. Uh, we got a march that's heading up, and I'm going to head up to the barge station here in a minute and we'll be leaving. So, anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, this is Freeman Sullivan signing off.